Hey guys, welcome back. It's Joey again. You're watching Vegas D Tech. I know it's been a quick minute, but so much stuff has been going on out here with all this uh, floods and so forth like this, flash floods. We're over here at Pittman Wash, actually in, the, in my neighborhood. You're actually seeing the little wash trail here between the neighborhoods over here. Then you got the walk trail and you got like a neighborhood over here. And uh, the way this thing works out here is that you, if you want to go jogging or running in your neighborhood, you can actually come through these trails and do that. Or um, if the weather's not bad, this down here is also, a, it serves a dual purpose where you can actually walk little teeny trails through here and snake through. They have like paths already carved out. But we got flash flood warnings today for this nonsense coming in. It's been this all day right here. But uh, they're saying that we got a little bit of this situation coming in. It might cause this to flood so they don't want nobody in there. So it's all locked out. So anyways, guys, we're going to go ahead and get into it today. It looks like these uh, water authorities could not get their act together and uh, meet the deadline. And so the uh, new sanctions and uh, water cuts have been enforced. And uh, that's what the reports are going to be today. Uh, but first, guys, before we get into it, if you guys could just do me a kindness, if you guys uh, like this style of reporting, this type of information, you find it beneficial or useful, if you guys could do me a kindness and leave a like, uh, subscribe if you haven't, share this information with your family, friends, loved ones, if you have any reasons and care about the situations with the water here at Lake Mead. All right, guys? All right, so let's just get into this report. We had, the plan was by the 16th, we were supposed to have some sort of of a plan between all the water basin authorities to come up with a solution to this water situation. And uh, of course, with uh, without a doubt, I already knew it wasn't gonna happen. They failed, they couldn't meet it. And now the federal government had to step in and impose sanctions. Now, the upper basin states are always gonna blame the problem on the lower basin states, saying that they don't know how to use their water, they're using too much of it and uh, they're not going to budge, right? So you just basically have somebody playing shuffleboard, kicking the problem, kicking the can down the road. Now, this is really funny because if you liken this situation to having a dysfunctional family, it's like you have your own problems in your own family that you can't fix, but you're gonna serve on a board of members where you're trying to tell other people how to manage the problems in their house. And that's just not going to fly, especially when you're dealing with all of these water authorities up and down, you know, the Colorado River. So anyways, uh, a lot of these water advocates are saying that these new cuts that were imposed by the government, uh, they're not enough. Environmentalists say the feds are not going far enough. So this is a dangerous game of chicken we're playing here. Um, but, you know, I think as has been the case on the river for the past 20 years is, you know, who, who really believes in climate change? Basically, it's a slap on the wrist saying, so what's going to happen? Well, they just basically wrote a citation and the citation means tier two and more cuts. And uh, they're saying that's just not... You're, you're leaving this up to the people here to decide. You're leaving it up to the states to decide how to uh, fix the situation, and they're never going to do it. They need more. They need more intervention, and that's what the water advocates are are trying to uh, advocate that they just need to do more, and they're not. So, guys, we have tier one, tier two, tier three, but they like to just keep on playing more games and giving it more time, waiting for more water to be used by giving now tier two or tier 2A, and then they're gonna have a tier 2B because they don't wanna to get too drastic and start making severe water cuts. They're trying to keep giving these states time to come up with a solution, which they're not going to, okay? I mean, the water is going to continue to drop and the states are gonna to continue to consume water that nature has not even been able to provide yet. They are already found ways to consume it, building, developing, what have you. They're just gonna keep consuming. And uh, you know, we're just gonna keep riding on data points and graphs and projections and so forth, more games, more games, until the next deadline to see if they have been able to uh, stand by and, and do the water cuts. But uh, I don't think they will because you got university people, they're saying, the, the university hydrology departments are saying that these cuts are not enough and that they're not they're not demanding that these things get done. They're just asking. Guys, we're beyond the asking. The more people ask, the less people are inclined to do it because they're only being asked to do certain things. 
they're not being demanded or ordered. And the, ad, the, the water advocates are saying that the federal government is just not doing enough at this time. We were talking about a while back ago, I was talking to you about the possibility that these dams are going to need new infrastructure put in, like diversion pipes, right? The diversion pipes were going to be necessary because the, the dam, especially Lake Powell, Glen Canyon, they're concerned that they're not going to be able to operate uh, if they go to Deadpool the infrastructure there that was made, the, the architecture was never designed to operate at low water levels like this. And that they needed the government to go and help them put pipes into where they can have water still be delivered downstream, even if they're at Deadpool. And uh, I told you that they were gonna do this and they're talking about not only doing it to uh, Glen Canyon, they're also talking about doing it to Lake Mead, okay, at Hoover Dam. So stand by, take a look at this video. The federal government has ordered cuts to some states' use of Colorado River water. The cuts were ordered for Arizona, Nevada, and the country of Mexico. The U.S. Department of Interior says drought and impacts of climate change are taking a toll, particularly on Lake Powell and Lake Mead. The feds are now exploring whether they can physically modify Glen Canyon and Hoover Dams to release water below Deadpool. That's the level so low that they can't generate electricity anymore. Federal officials are now exploring ways to modify Glen Canyon and Hoover Dams to allow water to flow through beyond the levels needed to generate electricity. It's just not enough. We should have initiated this construction study five years ago so that we were building bypass today. So what do you guys think about that? Yeah, man, I tell you, man, it's just I just use common sense, man. You know, I use common sense. You can clearly see what's going on here, man. You don't need data points and graphs and all these ridiculous projections from all these agencies telling you what you're obviously seeing. You know, if you have a drought and there's no water, if this thing is supposed to be filled up with water and there's nothing but a stream in it, why wait till it's acute to where there's absolutely nothing to take it seriously, right? Now guys, I want you to take a look at this uh, reporter that's reporting for the local news. He's actually at Hoover Dam. Now we're gonna go back out there in the next couple of days, but take a look at take a look at the condition of the dam right behind this reporter as he gives you this report. Take a look at it, we're gonna talk about it when we get back. Yeah, Glenn, you know, when you're talking water resources, this picture behind me here at Hoover Dam is not a good one. You should be seeing a lot more water in this reservoir, in part because of what you're seeing here. The federal government today, for the first time ever, declared a tier two water emergency here at Lake Mead. Did you guys see that? No, no. Did you guys see that, man? Dude, the guy standing doing the reporting behind him Hoover Dam, Hoover Dam looks like a, a meteor bomb crater. It looks like a mining pit. You ever see those gold mining pits and stuff where they just keep mining and mining and they keep going down in levels until they hit the water table and that's what's left? That's what that looks like, man. Just look how horrible the condition of the Hoover Dam looks right there. I mean, I don't have to give you projections and white paper reports from university hydrology departments for you to clearly see that there is something terrible going on here, man, that this, this drought situation is, is absolutely for real and that these people here have waited too long to do something about it. And now this aridification has sped up so fast with all of this evaporation, I don't know what the answers are going to be and if they're even gonna be able to do anything in a time frame that can reverse such a thing and bring some stability back to the lakes. In the time that I've been out here trying to figure out the reason as for who has been using up this water. Everybody's been asking, Joey, who's using the water? Where's the water going, right? And obviously everybody is blaming everybody else. The Northern states are saying, we don't have a problem with our water here. The water actually flows through our yard first. We have first dibs to it. It's these guys down below. And then I'm gonna divide the upper and lower between you know, they always say upper basin and lower basin. I'm going to divide the median. I'm going to call Las Vegas or Nevada the middle state because then you've got the Hoover Dam, which actually has water coming into it. And basically, Las Vegas has secured their own way of getting water, even after everybody else can't with the third straw. And they're basically saying, hey, look, the problem's not here with Las Vegas. We know how much water we're actually using with the allotment that we're given. It's the problem is continuing to be down below. Okay, and guys, I hate to keep putting the blame 
on California. I hate saying California because it just seems like today California is continuing to get so much hate for so many different reasons with all the migration and stuff that's coming out to other areas. But guys, you guys are asking for the truth and sometimes, man, the truth hurts. I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! So everybody else, everybody knows that California is the big bear in the room. California gets all of this major water or a big chunk of it. But if the California uh, municipalities and the cities aren't the reason, if the population of the cities, and of course the cities will never say that it's the population's fault, right? So what, who is to blame for it? And it really, really, really does look like every single time that we do these reports, it's the agriculture that is to blame for all of this, okay? The agriculture, but not just, not essential agriculture. I have no problems with essential agriculture. It's the nonsense, the nonsense that's going on with the non-essential agriculture, okay? The, the haze, the, the alfalfa. Now guys, I hate to be the one to have to say this, but California is going to have to step up to the plate because as long as the, as the end game, as long as this problem ends there with them, and they are the problem, and every state knows that they're the problem, as long as they're not going to make a concession with their agriculture to quit consuming water, we're going to continue having this problem. Now, what are the solutions with the alfalfa and, and the hay? Look, the senators of that state are going to have to sit there and tell these people, look, you cannot continue to grow these crops anymore. When the weather was good, when the climate wasn't a problem, we had plenty of precipitation, these crops were okay out here but right now they're not. So any non-essential hay, alfalfa, or what have you, any non-essential crops, they're going to have to stop, or at least the exports of these crops are going to have to stop. If the crops are for U.S. usage, if the, if the crops are for U.S. cattle and U.S. farmers, then that will be appropriated. And what I'm seeing right now is it looks like the government is going to be giving subsidies to these farmers to not grow this type of stuff. Yeah, guys, so it's, it's, it's high time that we accept the blame where the blame needs to be. And if it's the agricultural farms of California, non-essential agricultural farms that are eating up this water, it's time that the state steps up, the senators step up, the governor step up and say, okay, we got to stop this, bro. We need to stop it. All the other states here are actually allying against us. And you know what? Instead of being the hated state of all the other states, why not we do our fair share and contribute to getting this thing fixed and putting an end to this drought and trying to survive it unilaterally as a combined coalition of states along this Colorado. It only makes sense to me and it's high time that we do that. Quit playing games, quit dividing wealths, quit dividing you know, uh, states and regions and, and economic classes, it's time to stop that. If we are going to survive this as humanity, we're all gonna to have to make a concerted effort together to do this. All right, so guys, we're gonna talk now about percentages. When you watch the news here, you're going to actually see the percentages of the cuts that are being allocated or being imposed upon the states. Now, the first, uh, the first cut that we're gonna get is going to be to actual Nevada. Nevada is gonna have 8% an additional 8% cuts added to it for water shortages, okay? And then you're gonna have Arizona with, uh, yeah, you guys saw it, 21% water cuts to Arizona. Now guys, even the country of Mexico, not New Mexico, Mexico, has agreed to take their cut of 7%. And of course, when you look at California, tier one shortage, California took no cut. And now that we're in tier two, and all of the cuts have been handed out. Again, California takes no cut. Yeah, Joe, and the cuts coming down definitely infecting uh, the southwestern portion of the U.S. I want to bring in the areas impacted by this. There is the Colorado River and the three states, California, Nevada, and Arizona. Those are the uh, ones that are in the lower Colorado Basin and also the country of Mexico. Now, taking the largest cut is Arizona, a 21% reduction from their allotment off the Colorado River. Behind Arizona comes Nevada, an 8% reduction for us. 
Down in New Mexico, a 7% reduction. In California, one of the largest users of the Colorado River Basin, 0%. Now, we've got crews that are working the stories, asking the questions on why California has been a lot lower. Uh, they're working those stories today, and we'll be, of course, diving a lot more deeper into this story as we progress throughout the day. And people are wondering why that is. So, guys, if we're going to discuss why, we have to understand there's a reason for that. And the reason for the cuts is because Arizona went off and did a deal with California a while back where they said that if California helped them to build their infrastructure and get their aqueducts built so that water can be delivered to their cities and towns, and that project is called the Central Arizona Project, if California agreed to help them fund them and build it, that Arizona would agree to take on all of their debts, okay? All of their water debts, they would take that on for them. And guys, it's just time to pay up. Now for so long, everybody has burnt out. When we, when we lost our first 100 feet of water in Lake Mead, that was like burning through your actual, your actual debit account. And then we've been living off of a credit card all this time. And now the credit card account is almost maxed out. We just kept spending out of the bank account and saying, this is great, we can keep spending. But we never rebuilt the bank account. We never rebuilt the balance. And now there's no alternative but to call for very large cuts and reductions because there's no more money in the bank account. Some of the states have tried to say, we think it's a really important problem and those other guys need to fix it and stop spending. And other states are saying, well, we were willing to cut more, but we'll be damned if we're going to cut more if no one else is going to cut at all. Right. And uh, unfortunately, it's time right now for Arizona to pay up its fair cut. Plus, they're having to pay back the debts that they assumed for California. And that's the reason why you're seeing uh, Arizona with these 21 percent. Now, how are they actually getting through this? I haven't done a whole bunch of investigating Arizona because I'm trying to keep my state zones where I'm at. And uh, what I've got from reports from Arizona is that they're actually drilling deep and pulling groundwater up. And they're actually making concessions to make up for these, uh, these drought contingencies by sucking up groundwater. And many of the residents that are out there in these small towns that have wells, they're concerned that if all these corporations and water authorities are sucking up their groundwaters, that their wells are eventually going to go dry. So guys, Arizona is a very dry state, man. You see where they're at. I think Arizona's worse off in Nevada. You know what I mean? And they just got like a little teeny creek or an aqueduct of water that runs through a lot of these cities. And I'm concerned for Arizona, especially when they made this deal to eat up and buy up all of uh, California's water debts. But you tell me, man, what do you think about that? Share your thoughts. How do you feel about the future of Arizona? Are they going to be able to comply and meet the demands of not only burdening, sharing, uh, carrying the burden of their own state's debts and carrying also the weight and the burden of California's water debts as well? Guys, I'm going to show you this video of, uh, of a report that I got out of Mexico. It seems to me, dude, it doesn't matter what the contracts were that we signed way back in the 1900s with water rights. That stuff needs to be rewritten right now because we're in a state of aridification. Look at Mexico right now. Mexico has dried up so badly that the people there have to line up in the cities. The, ci the people have to line up and they're only allowed water for three hours provided by water trucks. The, the water's cut off, but it's only cut back on for three hours and government agencies, police and so forth are the ones that are providing waters to people that are standing in line with water jugs and water buckets. Tonight, desperation spilling into the streets of Nuevo Leon, Mexico. As families rush to stock up on water. 
Some using buckets, others the pots from their kitchen. Anything and everything to collect the last drop. Ya dejé mi trabajo por venir a juntar agua. The northern state of Mexico is in one of the worst droughts in over a decade after two years of dismal rainfall. NASA released these images of the Cerro Prieto Reservoir, showing just how dramatic water levels have dropped between 2015 and 2022. One of three reservoirs that provide more than half of Nuevo León's water supply, while others worry citizens aren't being prioritized. Protesters gathering outside factories like Heineken and Coca-Cola. Demanding they reduce water use and redirect it to citizens. El but for so many in Mexico, a warmer and drier world already a reality. All right, guys. So that's about all I have for you folks today, man. I, I don't know how this thing is going to actually get better. You know, I have my own opinion and, and conspiracies to what's going on here. And I kind of feel like, for me, I feel like the government wants this crisis to happen. You know what I mean? Because think about it. If they leave all this stuff into the control of the states and they can see that the states are bickering and complaining and that we'll never get it done and figured out for ourselves, when it finally, when this water situation actually gets acute, it's a crisis right now, but it's not acute. When it gets to be acute and the actual Grand Canyon looks like this, nothing, then it's more than a problem, it's dire. And once it goes dire, now the government has the power to step in, right? And that's to me exactly what the federal government wants because if they have to step in, they're going to have all the power to push the states around, to push people around, and just have that much control to tell people what to do. I don't know, man, I mean, in my opinion, because all of this stuff can be corrected, you know what I mean? We have time to do something right now, but once you've seen what the federal government has done, they just basically smack the citation saying, okay guys, more water cuts, we'll check back with you next year, see if you guys got it right. In the meantime, the water's gonna continue to drop, drop, drop. They're saying that this water should drop another 20 feet by July of next year, and that's cool. When you see the carnage that is happening right now at the lake, they're saying that another 20 foot of water loss by July of next year is acceptable. That's cool. The, the system can, can accept that. The system can, can, can burden, can share that load. Bro, I just seem, it just seems like this is all played out. Like this is something that they wanna happen. It could just be me, I don't know. You guys, man, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. I read your guys' comments, and uh, a lot of them are very, very good. You guys are definitely on board. But anyways, folks, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up, get it edited, get it out to you. We plan on going back out to the marina and to Hoover Dam the next couple of days. I got new cameras, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, take a look at all the marks that I had left out there for you guys from the last time that we reported. And we're gonna see if anything has changed in the water levels since I've been there last time. And you guys are going to be able to see with telescopic zoom exactly what I'm trying to point out. All right. So anyways, folks, if you guys like this content, you, you like these walk and talk vlogs, you got something out of it. It was beneficial to you. Please do me a kindness, guys. Hit the like button, share and subscribe and, uh, you know, share this information with your families, friends and colleagues and so forth. And uh, guys, I'm going to leave you with that. I'm going to get up out of here. It's about 103 today. This uh, rain situation, I have no idea probably be a quick 30 minute drop enough to just flood the strip out but not really be, be, be of any benefit but anyways guys i'm gonna get up out of here you guys be well i'll catch you guys in the next video this is joey you're watching vegas d-tech you guys take care bye now